Uh, well, I say this seriously because, you see, I could devise the Margaret Thatcher repeal bill and repeal all the legislation in 24 hours. But the ideas she's injected, which I think are very... Well, I think they're evil ideas, really, that we're all about clambering over each other to get to the, the rat race philosophy. There are people who've learned that who'll die Thatcherites, if you like, in the middle of the next century. So the power to defeat a bad idea is with a good idea. And I think politics is about teaching, being a student to listen and being a teacher to explain. And if you do that, then you may have some influence in the period of life through which you live, which is, I suppose, a proper aspiration in politics, holding office is quite a minor matter. Anyone can be a minister, as you know, from looking at the ones who hold high office. It's not just about management. It's about understanding and, uh, and trying to give people encouragement, give them confidence in themselves, rather than give them, ask them to have confidence in you. It's a, it's a slightly different view of the political process. Do you see yourself now as, as the conscience of the people, the watchdog? No, 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 no. that would be arrogant. I mean, I'm elected. I, a couple of days ago, I was re-selected for Chesterfield. In the next election, it'll be my 16th parliamentary election. 16. As a yeah. parliamentary candidate. Mm -hmm. And I, I work for them. They select me. If the people of Chesterfield want me, they'll elect me. If I get to the House of Commons, then I will try and speak for them. But the main thing, I think, is to give people hope. Because in my view, fear is a bad guide to action. When people are frightened, they go back into their shells. When they have hope, then they come out and they say, we can do something. They put an effort in. There's a lovely quote of uh, Lao Tzu, the Chinese philosopher, who said, as to the best leaders, the people do not notice their existence. The next best, the people honor and praise. The next best, they hate. The next best, they fear. But when the best leader's work is done, the people say, we did it ourselves. Now, that's a marvelous definition, in my opinion, of political leadership. And I try to aspire, perhaps, to encourage people to do it themselves. Mm. The, the, the interviews on the Late Show tend to be a bit spread. Yeah, um, right. What about the people who are saying now that we're seeing the end of socialism and indeed communism because of recent events in Eastern Europe and all of that? What well, I don't see it like that don't at all. That. I think that's the, the propaganda line, that they're yearning to have a poll tax in Warsaw, <laughs> longing to say, sell their water supply off in Uzbekistan. They can't wait to have a youth training scheme in Bucharest. Uh, I mean, I think it's just an illusion. What we're seeing, I think, is an upsurge of democracy. People want to govern themselves, and that's really what the Irish question is about. That's what the question Scotland is raising is about. I think what we're witnessing is a renewal of the democratic movement. And since Britain is a feudal society, I think it's going to have a very big impact on British politics. This idea that everyone that... Hi I think there's a Japanese philosopher in Washington who says history has come to an end. So if anyone's studying history, you're out of a job. <laughs> but actually... Well, history what do you mean by that? What, what he meant by that was capitalism has defeated communism oh, and yeah. that's the end of world history. Yeah. But with uh, hundreds of millions of people dying of starvation in the world, a quarter of a million babies die every month of diarrhoea, which could be cured with one day's defence expenditure of Britain alone. How can you say history's come it to is, an end? It is appalling. We've got a yes. huge task to do. And, uh, and the hope now, with the Cold War ended, to divert resources, I think, from uh, weapons of war to the means of life. Mm. Mm. You want to get in again, sir? Yes. Me old friend, yes. I'll come to you, yes. Will, <clears throat> uh, will, would you think, um, will Merlin Rees get, achieve what he said the other day in, in the House of Parliament as regards seeing, finding out who caused all this trouble? About Colin Years Wallace. Of, yeah. Well, I mean, what was interesting about Merlin Rees, and I, I know him, known him for years, was he got up in the House of Commons and said, I was Home Secretary, I was Irish Secretary, I didn't know what was going on. Mm. Now, anyone who thinks, therefore, after that, because he's a responsible man, that the security services are under political control, must think again. Do you, mean he was, do you mean he was lying or he actually didn't know what was going on? I don't think he did know he what didn't. was going on. No, I, I don't think he did. I don't think the security services tell anything. They decide their own enemies, they follow their own line. I, uh, I think we've got to try and get control of the security services. Because not exactly like the KGB, but you get people deciding what they'll do, who they'll deal with, who they'll shoot, who they'll blacken and so on. You're in a terribly dangerous situation. I personally have been arguing that like Co Colonel Oliver North, Colin Wallace should be brought to the House of Commons to give evidence. I put that to the Speaker personally, I put it to the Labour Party meeting, I raised it in the House. I think that's the only way of doing it. Don't put it to a British judge 
because no. the judges are not really, dare well, I say it, are not yes, really the no. people concerned with the truth, but for covering up very often when it's politically embarrassing. So yeah. I think we should do an Oliver North for Colin Wallace. Particularly not Lord Denning, please. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Uh, all the polls in the UK seem to point to a Labour victory in the next election. I was wondering, does Mr Benn think that Labour will win the next election and will Neil Con uh, Kinnock lead the Labour Party into the next election? Well, I'm not in the business of forecasting events, but trying to influence them, which is slightly different. I do actually think that British opinion is turned against Mrs Thatcher. I mean, the ambulance drivers, so, for example, ambulance crews, 80% support. I've been doing these meetings around the country at Chesterfield on the day before yesterday, nearly as big as May Day, thousands of people in the streets. There's that, there's the poll tax which is a wicked tax. You get a married couple with four unemployed children, they'll be paying five or six times the rates they're paying now, the local domestic rates. I think people really have begun to come out of this dream that you can be just an individual after yourself, out for yourself only. And Neil Kinnock's elected leader, and of course will become the Prime Minister when the election comes, assuming that my belief is correct. But you see, elections are not won during the campaign. Opinion shifts between elections. Elections register a shift that has occurred. And therefore, my task, as I understand it, is to give people an understanding, just as during the war, although Churchill was a very popular leader, at the end he was thrown out because people wanted a different Britain. They wanted the welfare state, they wanted the health service, they wanted decent pensions, they wanted proper housing, and they decided to make a change. So that's what will decide it, not the pollsters and the image makers and the people with balloons and T-shirts and all the rubbish that is associated with American politics. It's got to be a real presentation of the issues at some reasonable depth. I have two last questions for you. Why are you vegetarian? My son persuaded me to be one. I've never liked meat. <laughs> but my son said to me, um, he's a very keen lad, he's deputy leader in Ealing, he said, look, Dad, if the world ate the grain instead of feeding it to the animals and killing it, no one would starve. And you know it's a tremendously powerful argument. Not that my move from meat to grain <laughs> has saved many lives, but it's an important point, a responsibility for the planet. And I must say, since I became a vegetarian, I've had much better diets. The only thing I object to about vegetarian food is they've made it look so like meat that it quite switches me off. <laughs> you can get a vegetarian frankfurter that makes me think it is a frankfurter, and I'd rather eat a bun. But I do recommend it. You're much better health. You'd all be much healthier if you were vegetarians. And we would also make a contribution to the elimination of world poverty. And that's how he ends up getting a punch in the jaw from a butcher on the way out. Well, I had a letter from somebody in Dublin when I, before I was a vegetarian, because I went to McDonald's and had a hamburger, now very popular in Moscow, I understand. And uh, it was in the paper, I think, somebody photographed me. This was some years, many years ago. Uh, there was a strike in Dublin because McDonald's wouldn't recognise trade unions. So maybe you're not just eating meat that comes from animals, but you're trampling on meat made up of human beings. <laughs> <laughs> you're married to Caroline for 40 years this year. What 41. Are you 41. Yes. What are you, it only seems like 40. Um, <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you doing to celebrate? Well, uh, we, we, we were at the Socialist Conference in Sheffield, oh, actually. Oh, wow. That's... But on our honeymoon, we were at a Socialist Conference, too, in, uh, in Boston. <laughs> God. Uh, she's very political. She's the president of the Socialist Education Association. She's a, she met you at the Wexford News, Music hey? Festival oh, did she? last yes, summer. I must yes. tell you more about it later. <laughs> and uh, uh, so it's a very political family. She, uh, we, we've had a very happy So life. what are you doing, then, to celebrate? Well, we, i tell you what we are doing. Uh, she's from Cincinnati, Ohio, and this summer, we're taking six children, uh, four children and their partners and six grandchildren to Cincinnati. I think we're booking a special flight and we're going to find a place, where we're going to find, if we can, a church conference centre, because we're almost a conference now, where we can do our own catering and we're going to take all those, that little gang, 16 of them, back to the place where we were married and we're oh. going to have a smashing time. Oh. So there you are, you couldn't oh. do better than that. <laughs> Thank you very much for doing that. Nice to meet you. It's really nice to see you here. Thank you. Thank you. That's Tony Ben. Hey.